I'm Scott Allen Miller, and here on Sam IT today, we're going to talk about hardware and software RAID. People talk about this all the time, and there's two camps that both tend to get pretty excited. Half of the world thinks that software RAID is the only thing you should use, although pretty typically the people who are passionate about software RAID actually don't know they're using RAID and tend to get oddly excited about things they think aren't RAID that turn out being software RAID. For example, if you hear people say you have to use ZFS because it's better than everything else, that's actually just a more or less generic software RAID that they didn't realize was software RAID and didn't know how cool software RAID was and got all excited about it when they heard about really just software RAID. Hardware RAID, on the other hand, has about the other half of the world, and they get excited about, well, you have to use hardware RAID because it offloads stuff from your computer and it gives you all these special capabilities and extra cash and whatever. The reality is both have a place. One is not really more enterprise than the other. If one is, it's software RAID. Software RAID goes higher, but hardware RAID has a lot of nice features, so is more generally useful. So let's dig into it. What do we mean by software RAID? Well, software RAID is pretty much like it sounds. It is a system for creating a redundant array of inexpensive disks using software. Software reads in the information from a disk, puts many disks together, and presents it on as an interface as a single disk on up the stream to the hardware, or uh, I'm sorry, to the operating system. Everything's done in software. That means that your computer's CPU does the work. That means that your computer's RAM has to do any caching, any mechanisms for that, uh, any of the, because anything the CPU does has to go to RAM at some point, is all going to be in the system RAM. All of those resources are the main uh, computer resources. Hardware RAID is an acceleration card or onboard device. So if you are used to having a graphics card and how that offloads graphic work from your CPU, Hardware RAID does the exact same thing, but for RAID. Uh, so it has its own CPU, it has its own RAM. In some cases, it's a tiny amount of RAM that you never worry about, like you don't talk about it. Uh, and in most cases, it's going to also have a large amount of RAM that is cached. Today, it's common to see one or two gig of cache, um, but uh, you know it's it's possible to see like eight gig. In the future, we'll certainly be seeing terabytes of cache someday. Um, and in some cases, uh, it can handle uh, SSD caching and other complex mechanisms. But the hardware is an offload system. So it has its own processing and own RAM, and it does not use the main system for that. So a lot of people think that that's really awesome that you're offloading that. But unlike a GPU, the processing done in a RAID card is not dramatically different than our normal system processing, and our CPU is pretty efficient at it, and RAID does not use a lot of resources. So historically, going back to the mid-1990s, we needed hardware RAID to be able to do most type of RAID functions because RAID was simply a lot of overhead for our main CPUs. Our main CPUs were generally taxed and were bottlenecks holding us back. By 2000, primarily with the advent of the Pentium 3S processor, which was a larger cache, faster uh, clock cycle version of the Pentium 3, was the ultimate of the Pentium 3 series from Intel, we made a leap to a point where the CPU had excess power to the point where in any normal system, software RAID would outperform hardware RAID because we simply had spare resources that were otherwise wasted and the main system was so much more powerful than even an expensive hardware RAID card that software RAID was just faster and didn't cost us anything generally. Of course, there were exceptions, but generally. By the mid-2000s, we really no longer were seeing exceptions and both hardware RAID and software RAID are extremely fast. We don't really tend to see large differences in performance between them, but software RAID tends to have a very small edge. The one big thing that comes with software RAID is the ability to use larger and larger amounts of RAM or other types of cache because we have control of them. So if hardware RAID has a tendency to cap out around two gigs of cache, it's relatively easy to give say 128 gigs of cache in software RAID. But most people don't do that, so that benefit is often lost. Hardware RAID has the benefit of being able to, but not always, providing blind swapping, which we talked about in an earlier video. This is a huge feature and the driving reason why we normally would select hardware RAID. Hardware RAID, because of this, can often be made much simpler for you to manage because you don't have to manage a software system or know anything about it. And your systems people can step away and have nothing to do with the management of the hardware. So hardware RAID, provides a nice separation of duties, a nice way to interface with the system, a nice way to allow a data center or something like that to handle uh, your RAID functions. And by handle your RAID functions, we primarily mean putting disks into the system and replacing them when they fail. That's a really big deal because in operations, we want that stuff to be as smooth as possible. And so because of the way SMBs work, 
We have a tendency to tell SMBs to always use hardware RAID, not because it's faster, not because it's safer, not because it's anything. It's just because it's easier for them to deal with logistically in how the real world works with physical hardware. And because of the way that people assume systems work in the SMB, sometimes it's important to do that simply because if you work at a company and you're the lone IT, and five years from now, you may not be there anymore, or you may be on vacation, or you may not be available, or you may not be working, maybe you've retired, that system needs to be maintained by someone, someone who easily won't know what you've done and needs the systems to behave as expected. Hardware RAID makes that most likely and most safe simply by how it interacts with humans. Also, it's very important to consider that in most cases, we want our physical servers, most meaning over 50%, not 90%, I'm not saying always, just saying more than half the time, we want our systems to go out to something like co-location enterprise data centers. When we go out to co-location, the same things are involved. We really want blind swap for our disks, and hardware RAID lets us have that so that we can call the data center and say, hey, look for the drive that has the amber light on, or go stand in front of the rack and we're going to flash the light because a lot of a lot of drives let you do that, and swap the one with the that has the light on. It's that easy. If you didn't have blind swap and you're using software RAID for that, you would have to go have, wait for that person to get there, have a system administrator working on the IT side remotely, tell it to offline that drive, wait for the drive to get swapped, detect it, turn it back on, add it to the array. It's manual, doable, and it's done every day, but it's extra work that when you're dealing with something like a data center, you'd probably rather not have to deal with when you could otherwise just put in a ticket and say, hey, go look at my rack, replace the drive that needs to be replaced, done. Uh, same thing with vendors. You have a vendor coming in who doesn't have access to your systems. Remember, you don't want to give your data center or your, your hardware vendor uh, that's doing a you know next business day delivery. You don't want those techs to have access to your operating system and security systems. That's bad, right? You want them to be able to just pull hardware out and put hardware in. They're not part of your IT staff. They're part of your bench staff. So you want that separation, and this allows you to have that whether you're in-house or in a data center. Software RAID, again, has more capability for you to be flexible, do things that hardware RAID may not let you do, often cost less uh, simply because you don't have to buy that extra hardware. Hardware RAID tends to start around $600 today in current market prices for new uh, enterprise class gear that you'd be willing to deploy in production. Software RAID uh, tends to be free um, and almost always comes with your operating system. Now, some operating systems, most operating systems, come with great software RAID enterprise class options. Linux, BSD, Solaris, AIX, uh, in fact, anything that's going onto a mini or larger machine has to do software RAID because there's really no hardware RAID available for those markets. So large systems, large enterprise mini and mainframe computers are exclusively software RAID and simply expect that you have the expertise to do those things. It's also pretty obvious when you have that hardware in a data center that that's what you have. No one's going to be surprised when you have a giant Oracle Spark machine that you have to do something special with it. It gives it away just by looking at it. Same with a IBM mainframe, a Z, whatever. If you're looking at um, smaller machines, then we expect there to be hardware RAID available. One of the reasons, historically, that hardware RAID is so uh, ingrained in certain markets and not others is because uh, in the very earliest days, Windows did not include software RAID, unlike its competitors, partially because Windows has a lot more overhead than its competitors. Windows was used in a less enterprise space in the early days, uh, and Windows uh, runs on very small hardware traditionally. The combination meant that Windows simply couldn't do software RAID uh, effectively. When they finally added it, the software RAID that they added was not very reliable and very, very flaky and performed poorly, even when running on good hardware. So the Windows ecosystem tended to think of it as non-production ready, which is very much true. And so the Windows world simply assumed that hardware RAID would always be available, and it just became ingrained and it's for good reason but when you move outside the windows world you start realizing that that was unique to that space and that other areas linux freebsd for example uh see hardware rate and software rate as simply different options to take at different times uh, you can add software rate to almost any platform through third parties but generally this is not recommended because enterprise raid will just come with your operating system if it doesn't you're into kind of a weird position of you that's not how we fix that problem so by and large we avoid third-party uh software raid 
um, which leaves us uh, still today with the Windows world almost exclusively uses hardware RAID. The rest of the world mostly uses hardware RAID until we get to large systems. Now, that being said, operating systems are no longer what talks to your hardware. Today we virtualize, so it's your virtualization layers that need to provide uh, different types of RAID options. In the four enterprise um, virtualization environments available today, which are VMware, ESXi, uh, Microsoft Hyper-V, uh, KVM, and Zen, KVM and Zen both come with uh, MD RAID from the Linux kernel, and that is enterprise class, and you can do pretty much anything you want with it, so they have great software RAID options. Hyper-V comes with, again, Windows software RAID, which does work, but is very limited and not generally trusted. It's recommended that you don't use it, the same as with uh, running Windows normally, so we consider Hyper-V to generally not have software RAID, even though it does. Uh, VMware ESXi does not have software RAID at all. So in the VMware world, you must have enterprise hardware RAID, and in the Microsoft world of Hyper-V and or Windows, while you don't absolutely have to have hardware RAID, it is generally recommended and assumed that that is how you will approach that problem and you will not try to use software RAID. And then outside of it, again, all optional, no matter what other operating system or hypervisor you're going to use, software RAID is an option as well as hardware RAID. So it really comes down to choosing what makes sense for your environment based on cost, maybe on performance, on flexibility and how you're going to interface with the people who are working on your systems. I hope that that helps explain why both software and hardware RAID are totally enterprise ready, why they both have a place, why neither one is going away anytime soon, and why different ecosystems view each as being uh, important and in many cases the only thing that they would be willing to use and why that then creates confusion when people from one ecosystem look at other ecosystems and find it surprising. If you come from the VMware world, you might be shocked to find that people in the Zen or KVM world find software RAID to be completely enterprise class when VMware doesn't have it at all. And people from Zen and KVM are completely shocked to find that VMware has a dependency on hardware RAID, but it's just different approaches to the same problem. One already had access to code that they wanted to use. One didn't want to tackle an already uh, designed wheel when a great wheel already existed for them to leverage. Thanks for joining me. Remember to like and subscribe, ask questions below, get involved in the discussion, and if you want to support us here, there'll be a link to Patreon where you can donate directly to the cause.